everyone, it's Lorelai. In today's devlog, I wanted to go over how I made my main character. Her name is Deirdre. How I made her idle animation, how I made her walking animation, and then how I made her melee attack. The idle and walking animations are actually not very exciting. They are literally from the Time Fantasy asset pack. Here is, uh, is, is Deirdre. This is the character that I liked of the sheets that I saw. And with this character sheet, all I did was I added brown rabbit ears because she's a rabbit girl. I also added white rabbit ears because there are actually two races of bunnies. There's the white ears and the brown ears. They're the field lapori and then the sky lapori. But that's story stuff. I don't know if you're here for that. <laughs> so the rest of these guys are just going to be NPCs and this is going to be my main character. Turning this RPG maker... Sprite sheet was actually pretty easy in Pixel Maker. All you have to do is add the resource, right? So I just added the resource. I set the partition. It is three by eight, this particular one, because it also has uh, an attack animation. You can also import the entire NPC sheet, right? You can import this entire thing and then just say it is 12 by eight instead. Then you go into animations and go through these three different columns here. So we've got motion, direction, and frame. Let's go ahead and just and just make a new motion. We're gonna make um, another walking animation, okay? And I'll just delete it later, it's not a problem. So we've got uh, walking for video, <laughs> for devlog, I'll say, walking for devlog. Uh, set the direction, we're gonna have four directions, right? But we're not going to make all four right now, we're just gonna say this first direction is down. And then we have to set the arrow down. Then for the frame, we have three to choose from, right? These are all the down walking animation sprites. So the first frame we want, we want this top left, okay? Because we're going to be from idle, just standing, to walking, right? So we immediately want to start walking instead of going into idle. Then we're going to add another frame, and we're going to say she's idle. Although really she's just mid mid walk, I'd say. And I'm sorry, I'm in the way. <laughs> let me let me move this is over for you. There you go. Right. So this is mid walk. We're gonna add another frame, and this is the rest of the walk. And then we're gonna add one more frame for up again. Okay. So it goes one, two, three, two. Okay. Uh, this is assuming it's going to loop, which it should. <laughs> so we have to go back to walking for devlog and select infinite loop. So while she's walking, while these directions are being held, it's just going to loop through this. And if we press play, we can see she's, she's going crazy freaking fast. <laughs> so after we added all of our frames, we're going to copy all of our frames. I thought you could do it with shift, but I guess you have to do it with the control. Can you do this? OK, OK. So you can shift click them all up here and then go to frame count to display and set it to whatever. We're going to try six right now. Okay, and as you can see, it's spaced apart the frames in our timeline. So we can press play. And she's going at a much more reasonable pace, I think. Still a little fast. So let's set it to eight. That's good. I think that's good. Okay, so that's her walking. What's what's her walking here? Is it eight? It is eight. Okay. <laughs> so I like I like that speed, I guess. I like the speed of eight uh, for that. Then what we got to do is to change the wall detection and the collision detection. And let's just do that one at a time. So this is the collision detection. This means if an enemy is going to oops, attack you, all right, so don't do that. <laughs> Click collision down here. Uh, what are they going to hit? Well, they're probably just going to hit my whole body and that's going to count as damage. Okay. The tips of her ears are invincible. That's going to be um, a story point. <laughs> Not really. OK, so that's that's the collision detection. And that's going to be for all of the frames unless you wanted something different. And I'll show you that later. Uh, then we have the wall detection, which we just kind of want for her feet because this is going to be her running into walls, which is, is typically the tiles, right? Uh, so this part can be up on the tile, up on the wall, for example, but not her feet. Her feet can't go up on the wall, assuming the wall has collision, right? Which it should. <laughs> it's a wall. <laughs> all right. So that's that's really it. That's all you got to do. So we have our walking down animation. Uh, as for connection point, this is something that is um, beyond me right now. I'm still figuring this one out. And then attack detection is going to be if you're holding a weapon, 
like this one down here, which we'll go over in a second. Also, don't forget when you're making this character to set the animation origin setting to floor. Luckily, if you do it for one, it automatically does it for, for all of these because it's all part of this one character or this one animation. So after you have down, the only thing you have to do is copy down and paste. And we're going to call this one left. And important, remember to check this on and check this one off. <laughs> that is so easy to forget. And it's kind of very important. Uh, so after you've done that, just go through and reselect the correct sprites. And I recommend that you keep at least the wall connection the same for all of the directions. Try not to change the wall detection. What ends up happening if you make this bigger or smaller is you might be um, uh, next to that wall, that wall that we're talking about earlier. <laughs> you might be next to it. And if the wall detection ever gets bigger, you'll end up like, like jumping back from it and it looks it looks not very good <laughs> it doesn't look very nice so so try to keep the the wall detection the same preferably for all of these as you can see mine aren't really perfect um, I'll have to fix that later but it's something to keep in mind okay so we have all this and you're basically just going to do this for all of your directions right and then up and then that's where uh this one is and she's walking she's having a she's having a good time I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. <laughs> and then we have the melee attack. Okay, so the attack detection. Uh, I have a sprite right now that includes the actual sword or it's a dagger rather. Again, it's time fantasy. Um, and we'll talk about this in a second too. I have an actual picture of it on the same sprite sheet. What I'd like to do in the future is make this dagger its own animation with its own attack detection uh but right now it's it's the same as as Deirdre it's it's connected to her <laughs> for this you're going to do the same thing you did for walking uh but this time you're going to I think you'll need to right click and add uh an attack detection and this just means if something hits this red square it's going to take damage for the attack detection, I actually went ahead and added different keyframes to it, different timings for it. We have three frames, one where the dagger is up here, the second frame where the dagger is kind of in the middle, right? And then the third frame where it's it's also in the middle. <laughs> uh, so I just went ahead and made it so that at this frame, uh, the damage is right here. And then in this frame down here, you have to right click and add keyframe. You would add keyframe here. Uh, it, it deals damage for the entirety of her front area. Although really realistically, I think the damage would only be here because that's where here would be here because that's where the enemies are. But um, <laughs> I'm still figuring stuff out. I'm still learning. Uh, luckily, it's very easy to change. It's not a big deal. So um, Figure out what works for your character. And then here we have the final little bit. In fact, I'm going to reach this out some more because I, I think I, I had a good point. I think it doesn't need to be that far low. Okay, that's fine. And so, yeah, I have another keyframe for the final, for the final frame. And that's it for all of these. I did the same thing for left, right, and up. And this is what it looks like in game. And I can show you how I programmed it also. Right now I'm, I'm left clicking and it works well, I think. For this one, I set the frames in between each frame. I don't know what they're called, an interval maybe. <laughs> uh, I set it to five, oh no, six apparently. I set it to six uh, because I thought eight was too slow. You can set it so that they're not moving in the direction of you know WASD, they're not moving in that direction of the key press uh, while they're in this animation, while they are attacking. And because they're animation locked, I figured it should go really fast. Um, in fact, I might even make this even faster because let's see, let's see how it feels. It's really all about like how it feels, right? So she stops to, she stops to attack, it's the animation lock. Um, I could also set it so that maybe a stat increases that speed. So a stat would, uh, like agility or something, would speed that up. And uh, and I'll figure that out later. <laughs> Just some ideas. The actual object I'll go over later, uh, but it's pretty easy. It's just it's just this. It's just a uh, 
It's it's literally nothing. <laughs> it's like when you press a key, then go to melee attack, and that's it. And that's all I wanted to go over for this episode. In the next episode, I will go over how exactly I made this sprite. Uh, it was with a template from the Time Fantasy Patreon page, a template of attacking in four directions. And then I had to customize it to fit um, this character, to put on her hair and her clothes and her ears and all of that. So stay tuned for that episode. I hope you're enjoying this series and I will talk to you later.